As I, as I said, I, I grew up in Hinckley in Leicestershire and um, uh, my mother contracted polio uh, just as I was, um, um, I was, being, I was ex being expected. Does that sound right? Just w as I was in the womb, right? She was expecting me and she contracted polio, so it was a difficult time and everything. And uh, when um, I, I got home, I don't, I don't remember the early years, obviously, uh, but my parents had a bungalow built. That's the story I was getting to, all right? And so I, I grew up in, the, in this bungalow and uh, we didn't have a car in the early days and everything, so everything was done on, on bikes. And when I was a teenager, I used to cycle everywhere and I joined the Boys Brigade and I used to cycle off the Boys Brigade and then cycle back again. The thing that I hated was getting home at night, you know, um, in the winter and it was dark and you'd cycle down the side of the bungalow and then the shed where the bikes were kept was right at the end of the garden. Of course it was a long garden, you know, really long garden that they had in those days. And I used to sort of pedal down to the shed, get off the bike, and of course there were, there were what do you call them, Dyn dynamos, dynamos? Yeah, you know what I mean, don't you? So once you stopped pedaling, there was no light. You know, so you got this pitch dark sort of thing. And of course there was no outside lights in those days, you know, or you know, lights that come on, security lights, that's it. There was nothing. So I used to get the bike in the shed, shut the door and run straight up the garden path, which was flat. Uh, there was only some steps at the end and into the house, because I, I didn't like, I didn't like the dark. And I think if we're honest, not many of us do like the dark. But light is that wonderful thing. And in those words that Lex read to us, Jesus came to bring light. He says further on in John's Gospel, I am the light of the world, you know, and that's a tremendous thing. So I wanted just to think about that for a few moments tonight. Uh, not tonight, so this morning, I've gone to the night already. Um, but light is, is one of these themes that runs through the whole of the Bible. There are threads that run through the whole of the Bible. And if you look in the, in the fourth verse of the Bible, chapter one in Genesis, it talks about God creating the day and the night. He created the light and he created the darkness. Now that's an interesting thing to think, think about because sometimes we think of darkness as evil, but in actual fact it was something that, that God gave to us to rest in, to enjoy, and to relax. It's perhaps man who's made that, that sense of darkness um, and, and, and that sense of evil. But it's talked about in the Bible, it's talked about there, and we read about in the story of Moses, when he encountered God, his, his face was glowing. It was glowing so much that he had to put a mask on uh, because the, the people were afraid. As the, as the exiles wandered through the wilderness, they were led by a, a pillar of fire. It guided them. And then you go on to the New Testament and you see the, the story of the angels and the shepherds. The angels, you know, the shepherds were huddled together around a campfire probably. And all of a sudden there was this bright light and they were terrified. And yet it brought good news. And the star that guided the wise men. And then if you go further on, you read about Paul who was struck on the road to Damascus by a bright light. And he couldn't see, he was blind. But then you got that wonderful verse when uh, Ananias went to, to lay hands on him. And it says that the scales fell from his eyes. He can see, you know, and it's tremendous. I can always remember once going to have some new glasses. I, I can really, yeah, that's, yes, that's better. <laughs> Right, if I take them off, you all go blurry. <laughs> and I can go for some new glasses and going to have them fitted. And she put them on, and and she looked so the, the, the person who was putting them on, she looked so much clearer and brighter than 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 when I'd seen her through my old glasses. I said, you know, I was I said, this is wonderful. 
yeah, I can really see you now. You can, you, can, you can see everything. And it was a fantastic experience. What does the light bring? It brings to us illumination. We can see things as they are. But that means we see the warts and all. You know, when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you think, oh, yes. Oh dear, I've got more wrinkles. Yes, and my hair is greyer than it was yesterday. <laughs> That's this if you've got any. Oh, you, we won't go any further. Uh, it brings, but light can bring joy and hope and comfort. If you've got, a, if you've got an open fire at home, we've got an open fire, you know, and, and you light the open fire and you feel the warmth and you feel the light and you feel the brightness. We, um, like many people, we used to come every year on holiday to Swanage. And when it got to the point of saying, where do you want to, to retire to? Or uh, then, then we ended up in Swanage, that was the reason. But uh, for part of that time we came down, we camped. And camping is, is quite difficult and adventurous. But uh, like in most of the campsites, you're supposed to uh, get up and pack the, uh, pack the tent on the day you're leaving uh, and then go off sort of thing. But I mean, if there's a dew on the ground and everything, then when you get home, you've got to get the tent out and dry it. So we thought this is a bit, this is a bit silly really. So what we, what we did was we camped and we paid for a whole fortnight so that we finished on the, on the Saturday. But what we would do, we would go down to the beach, spend the day on the beach on the Friday, then come back to the campsite when it was nice and dry, most of the time, right? And drop the tent, pack everything away, pack all the kids into the car, squeeze everything in, the dog as well, and then we would drive home. The point of this, at that time we were living in South London, so we had a long journey home, all right? And uh, we would, uh, <clears throat> get so far, we'd probably stop for, for, for tea uh, or, or get something to eat. I mean, you have to feed kids these days, you see. And uh, we would drive home. And uh, there, was seven, there was more than one way to, to drive home. So I think we, is it the A31? We went over what we call the Hogs Back, which goes to Guildford. And at this point in the journey, so we're about an hour and a half, two hours into the journey, right? Everybody in the car is asleep, apart from me, who's driving, right? And it's dark, and it's pitch black and everything. But going across the hog's back, if you've ever driven across that at night, towards Guildford, you get onto the top, and all of a sudden you see this bright light in the distance. And it's the lights that illuminate Guildford Cathedral. And it was that sense, although it was dark and it, and, and it was lonely in the car because everybody was asleep. I've got nobody to talk to. Even the dog had gone to sleep, right? But it, there was that light leading, leading us on. And that light that Jesus brings leads us, leads us on. But just a second point, uh, we've already indicated that we, we tend to love darkness. There's this idea that we love darkness. In actual fact, I'm not quite sure if it's, Correct, because the, the, the image is that a lot of evil things are done in the dark. But statistically, I, I learnt some years ago now that the police were saying that a lot of burglaries are actually committed in the daytime. Well, the burglars got to see what they're doing, haven't they? You know, I don't, I don't know whether that's right or not. Um, but, but we see from the Bible a lot of what went wrong went on in the night. When Jesus was arrested, when was he arrested? He was arrested at night. When Jesus was tried, when was he tried? At night, when he should have been tried in the daytime. When Jesus was crucified, what happened? Darkness came for three hours. Then he died. And I, interesting point, I was reflected on that. It says there were darkness for three hours, but it doesn't say what happened afterwards. It doesn't say that the light just came back or anything. We just left. I don't know, but light came back. And then three days later, he rose again. You know, man tried to extinguish the light, but it failed. 
And if you look around the world today, there are countries where they've tried to extinguish the, the light of Jesus Christ, like China. There is still a strong Chinese church underground, but it's still carrying on. In Korea, there are still uh, Christians in, in North Korea. Um, it's still carrying on. And in Russia, those of you who were here for, um, those of you who are on the beach for the sunrise service, which is Clues Lex, you see, because he was there, right? Uh, yes, and, and my good friends here. Um, well, uh, remember that I used that illustration, how the, the communists got all the, the Russians together on Easter Sunday some years ago and gave them a whole spiel on communism and everything to crush uh, the, the euphoria of celebrating Easter Sunday. And the, it went on and on and on. And then in a pause, a little uh, Russian Orthodox minister stood up and yelled out the words, Christ is risen, not in English, in Russian. And the people responded with the re refrain, he is risen indeed. You see, you can lecture, you can try and put the fire out, but it will never, never go out. And ultimately, if we allow the light of Jesus to transform us, he will do that. So what's our response to this? I listened to a sermon not long ago from somebody who had been to college fairly recently and his lecturer had uh, said, when you get to the end of a message, you need to say, what's the point? You know, what's, what happens next? You know, so what, I think, were the words he used. Well, I think it's this that we're called to shine like him. Like the illustration of the, the light bulb, we're called to shine like Jesus. To shine that people are attracted to the light. Not attracted to us. It was really, sorry, it, I'm, I'm digressing now, but it's your fault because you brought the dogs, right? Uh, but yesterday afternoon, we had to go to Pets at Home in Paul uh, to, to get some extra bits and pieces from our new puppy before she devoured everything in the house, right? And now, this is what happened. I was walking in holding this um, uh, eight-week-old puppy. She, she couldn't be put down because she hadn't been vaccinated and we were looking for a puppy bed. And it was a bit like taking a baby in, you know. Oh, isn't she so lovely? And of course I was saying, oh, that's very kind of you to say that to me. You know, the, the puppy's nice as well. <laughs> uh, to which my wife told me off for, right, but, but that's, but what I'm trying to say is that we should shine for Jesus. We should shine not for ourselves to draw people to, to us. Oh, you're a nice person. But to draw them to Jesus you know, to draw them to Jesus. But it, it, it's that idea that, that the cross uh, uh, is central and that we need to point people to him, to shine for him and to point people for him. So my question is this, are you shining for Jesus? If you go out, do people look at you and say, there's something different about you. There's something different about you. Oh yeah, you might go to church, but there's something different, and I want that. Do people realize you're different? And we need to shine for them. And just one thing you can think about, particularly this week, I don't know if anybody's gonna be involved in it from, from here or from any of the churches, but the, um, <clears throat> my friends here will agree with me <laughs> now they're worried what I'm going to say <laughs> but the, the, the church ministers in the town uh, have, have met and we've been very concerned about the issues and the problems in the town so one night we actually walked round the town to see what was going on and uh, we found out you know that, that a group of young children not young, uh, young teenagers were gathered 
uh, at North Beach uh, together and they were passing bottles of vodka around. And uh, there wasn't much ha helping at the skate park. There were some things going on uh, in the centre and then there were other things going up at Prince Albert Gardens. And so we sat down and they've been discussing and praying it. And this week we're aiming to do some prayer walking and pray for our town. We're not walking around with badges on saying we're prayer walking for Swanage. We're just going to be walking around and quietly praying for our community. And that's what we need to do. We need to shine for our community and we need to pray for our community. So I'll leave that with you. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you that you came to be our light. Help us to respond to that light in the way that we ought. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Now we're going to sing, we're going to sing a hymn. And I'm going to say this, this, and this is going to confuse you. That it's difficult to sing. It's not difficult to sing. The words are difficult because it says, have thy, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Are we prepared to let God take our lives and use it? That's what I'm getting at. The tune is fine, the playing will be brilliant. Um, <laughs> but think about the words. Please stand if you're able to. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay.